It started off with everyone saying, no, you can't do that. We had no opportunity to fail. It was a little scary at times. It's very unique to do a major retrofit on an HVAC system in a building that's less than 10 years old. 340 on the Park is a luxury high-rise condominium association opened in 2007, 64 stories, 343 units, and 672 feet tall. I arrived at the property in October 2012 and immediately in reviewing their budget realized they had a $500,000 operating cost and district cooling. They were willing to let us go out and just really try to push the boundaries on energy efficiency and design. So we created a series counter flow chilled water plant that had a variable primary chilled water pumping system. Uh, this is one of the most efficient configurations of a chiller plant that can be built. The cooling towers on the building, we also wanted to kind of challenge the norm there and we ended up doing something that's very rarely done and we made it a variable speed condenser water system as well. So our, in, our final system allowed us to have a lot of variability which saves a lot of energy but it also makes it somewhat complex. I think it was important for us to find a contractor that was going to partner with us in the same way that Cyclone Energy did, forward thinking. We knew it was going to be a complicated project. This project had a somewhat unique bidding process compared to other projects we're used to seeing because Cyclone really uh, came up with not just the problem, but a pretty well thought out solution. So while it was a design build project, uh, we didn't have to do all of the engineering. We didn't have to develop the solution. It came to us and we were just responsible for finishing out the engineering and coming up with the pricing. My role for managing the construction process for 340 in the park was to act as the technical liaison between the building and Hill Mechanical. Distilling all that technical details into a simple sentence that they can pass on to their board members and residents of the building so that everybody understands what is going on. Cyclone Energy Group was key in helping us get board approval to move forward for the voting process with residents. It takes us months to get 20% quorum for an annual election. However, for the chiller plant, with our marketing material that we submitted, in two and a half weeks we had 70% approval. It was so cool. It was like that. We looked at it from all the concerns that the residents of the building had, from energy efficiency, reliability, acoustical concerns, and health and welfare. One of the biggest concerns with this project was that the chiller plant is located directly above a multi-million dollar penthouse condominium. We had to come up with a plan to mitigate any noise and vibration from translating to the penthouse below. We took the steps of making sure that the contractors and their design process included a qualified acoustical engineer who came up with a series of recommendations that we followed very closely. Those recommendations included putting the chillers on air springs, which essentially hold the equipment up on a pillow of air to keep the vibrations from going into the building itself. And they took readings in the penthouse below the unit before and after, and there was no noticeable change after the equipment was in full operation. This project had a very critical uh, deadline. The district cooling uh, was scheduled to end in September of 2016. So that was our deadline. When we realized that we were going to have a tight time frame, we decided to use a larger helicopter and assemble the chillers in uh, single pieces in order to still meet the final end date. Helicopter lift day had a lot of parts and pieces that had to be coordinated in advance. This project was being executed in the middle of summer, so we had to make sure all the phasing was done correctly. Any downtime was minimal, no interruption of chilled water. Getting all of the trucks there with all of the equipment on there, they had to show up on time and in the right order. Neighboring businesses on the ground floor had to be evacuated during lift day. Then we had to have a crane on site to actually assemble the cooling towers. The top 10 floors of 340 on the park had to be evacuated. We had a crew of about 16 individuals throughout Maggie Daly Park, Upper and Lower Randolph, and all of the streets in the area, making sure that we didn't have any pedestrian or vehicular traffic enter our safe area. If anybody was to come into that area, the helicopter lift would have ended immediately. We had equipment that if it were to be dropped during this helicopter lift and destroyed, would take months to be rebuilt and would really set our whole schedule off. Ultimately, we had to cancel and reschedule the helicopter lift just about two days before the helicopter lift was scheduled to take place. The entire lift got pushed back one week and we had to re-coordinate all of the different contractors and all of the different inv individuals involved with the lift so that we could have the lift take place one week later than originally scheduled. There was no chance of uh, blowing it or getting an extension. Safety was the number one priority that day. We had less than a minute to drop 20,000 pounds of equipment through a hole with only one foot of clearance on each side and an 80 mile per hour downdraft. 
any little thing that goes wrong can really destroy the whole project. So as the equipment comes through the roof, we had these skates that we built in the shop that we landed the chillers on. The skates were specially made for the project to handle the 20,000 pounds in equipment. And as soon as the chillers were landed on the skates, we, we hooked up pulleys and chains and we began tugging the first chiller into position out of the way to accept the second chiller to come in. We only had about six minutes until the next one came. Lifting chillers that are near the maximum capacity of the helicopter sounds like it's gonna be very stressful, and it is. But what was even more stressful was watching the helicopter pick up the cooling towers. The cooling towers are about half the weight of the chillers, but they're substantially larger. And when you have hurricane force winds coming down off that helicopter, bouncing off the building, and pushing against the cooling tower, that tower starts to move. And it's going up 64 floors. The whole time you know it's gonna be okay, but you can't help but be nervous. It becomes pretty much like a rag doll. As it's coming down, you have to catch four bolt holes. If those bolt holes are a little bit off, there's a lot that could go wrong. The first one was definitely scary, and we knew the next challenge on the final cooling tower was gonna be even more difficult because we only had an eight foot area to land a seven foot object that was swinging five to six feet at a time. So as we began to lower the second cooling tower, the cooling tower was swinging out of control and we were hovering for roughly three to four minutes, which is two minutes more than they like to. We are now at probably four to five minutes and it began slamming into existing ductwork in the roof. It was snapping off plumbing vents. Uh, it was, it was kind of pure chaos for, for a good like 30 seconds and it was on Father's Day. So I had to make sure everyone went home to their families that day. We made the decision to just grab the unit and at one point everyone just ran up and grabbed, grabbed one of the legs and we were able to secure it and then we began lowering it and we caught, we caught the four precise bolt holes and the day was made. June 19th, the chillers were lifted, put in place and by August 1st, we had the chillers started up and running yeah, 10 4, we have water flow up And here. we were immediately able to serve part of the building with chilled water. And by September 1st, we had the building uh, completely serviced by the new chiller plant. The residents didn't notice any change. All they knew is they had air conditioning before and then they had it after. We received a utility incentive. We applied for it during the design phase of the project. And then we ended up receiving about $69,000 of utility incentive money given the efficiency of the equipment. We overcame a lot of obstacles and it was definitely something I'll always look back on and be proud of. I want to do more of these. These are fun and we can help building owners everywhere with these. We had a really great team for this project. I don't think we could have assembled a better group of people. It was an amazing project. Um, probably the largest project I'll ever do in my career and working with Cyclone and Hill, that partnership made this project a success in my opinion.